Welcome everyone back to Weekly Weather Updates and for our first video today we're going to have our first look at the winter of 2021-2022. We're going to have a look at some climate drivers which could be impacting what we could be seeing over the course of December, January and February. Now just first of all I'd like to get out there. I do believe that there is an above average chance we do see at least a colder than average winter. Now, I'm not saying we're going to be seeing a lot of snow. I'm not going to be saying we're going to be seeing masses um, amount of freezing weather. But I do believe the current drivers um, and sort of statistics that we do have are heading towards the potential of something at least colder than we've had, or what we've had recently, um, and probably uh, colder than average. But as I said, things can change, um, and we're just going to have a look at the climate drivers. So, do you remember, if you enjoyed my videos, make sure you like and subscribe, and do remember to follow on Twitter as well, the link's in the description. So, uh, as you can see on the screen right now, I'm opening up with an image of some very heavy snowfall we saw earlier this year. Um, now, we did see a quite a cold um, January, um, and very cold start of February this year. However, the winter... Um, of 2020 2021 did actually come out warmer than average um and again it's very difficult doing these forecasts because we are generalizing three months 12 13 14 weeks that's what we're generalizing here and of course in those three months you can get two or three weeks of exceptionally cold conditions and then nine weeks of really mild, wet and windy weather. And then that would offset being quite a milder than average winter. That's what we kind of had last winter. Um, and I'm definitely seeing the signs this winter. We could be seeing something a lot more blocked. Um, and that's what I'm seeing within the drivers. And I'll show you that in a minute. But I just need to keep that out there that I'm not guaranteeing um, we're going to be seeing a lot of snow. I'm just showing what's the highest likelihood at this stage so we do first have a look at the zonal mean winds at 10 hpa now if you don't know what this is uh this is basically a graph showing the strength of the winds in the stratosphere at 10 hpa a pressure level a few kilometers above our heads um and you may have seen the phrase the polar vortex go around and at 10 hpa over the course of the winter, we do see the polar vortex forming. This is where we see a big area of very cold air, getting out to sort of minus 70, minus 80 degrees Celsius, above the North Pole, right at the top of the stratosphere. Now, it develops a low pressure core, and this provides very strong west to east delay winds. And you can see here, on this graph, we can see the wind speeds on the left and the time of the year. So you can see the polar vortex forms right at the end of August into the start of September. Now, it sort of climbs to sort of max strength around sort of mid-December to maybe early January time. And then slowly dips off into, um, into April. And now something that's very important with the stratosphere is it does have a very big play um, in the weather for the UK and generally in the Northern Hemisphere. You've definitely, if you've been watching my videos and since sort of Met Office videos as well, definitely heard the phrase sudden stratospheric warming going around. And this is basically where at 10 HPA, where we have this very cold, low pressure system, we see a very warm sort of pocket of air push into this stratospheric core and it displaces the polar vortex or it can even split it and what this does is disrupts these winds a few kilometers by uh, above in our heads these winds are one of the most core elements that powers the jet stream which bring in the zonal flow i.e from west to east uh, with our air coming in off the north atlantic which even in the depths of winter is not particularly cold at all it's generally pretty mild and that's what we got in the winter of 2019 2020 we saw a very very strong polar vortex and a very strong jet stream and we generally had a very westerly theme we had multiple um, storms but you can see on this current chart if you do have to look at the red dotted line that's what we had last year and you can see the polar vortex was very strong throughout the early season through november december losing its strength towards the end of december and we saw a sudden stratospheric warming 
through the first few weeks of January. And as I said at the beginning of the video, we had a very cold end of January and start of February. And that was because of this sun stress for warming. It slows down the jet stream, brings up big amplification, and those warm pockets of air that are right at the top of the stratosphere do sink down as high pressure through the atmosphere. And that's why we can get northern blocking. Now, on the current charts, you can see we only have a forecast within the GFS ensembles and the CFS model, which is a very long range model out to the end of December. So it doesn't cover the whole winter, but it does give us an idea. And as you can see by last winter, we had a winter of two halves, very strong at the start and weak at the end. And that's why we saw some quite cold weather even throughout January, February, and even into sort of springtime, April time, we saw some very cold plunges as well. So you can see at the moment, we've got the GFS ensembles, which are green, which are actually forecasting over the next few weeks, the, the uh, polar vortex to get weaker, still positive, um, so still putting westerly winds, but weaker. And you can see in the longer term, the majority of the CFS models, uh, CFS runs, sorry, are going weaker than average. Now you can see there's two colours here. We've got the purple colour, which is the CFS bias corrected, and the CFS. Now, uh, if we take off the uncorrected, uh, if we take off, sorry, the uh, bias corrected, you can see pretty much all of the CFS runs are going for a weaker than average polar vortex. Now, we have to correct it, or the computer corrects it, because it can be biased um, towards weaker polar vortex. But you can see, very weak, um, and if we do even add on the biased, um, the bias corrected, you can see generally, they are still very weak through early winter, through November and December. And that's why there are a lot of rumblings going around, we could be seeing something cold um, early winter, um this season they do in the longer term of course go strong go back to around average or above average but again these things can change and it's really what we're looking at the sort of the medium term throughout november and early december it's what we need to keep an eye on and you can see throughout december the majority are below 20 meters per second which is pretty weak this time of year a good sort of 10 meters per second or weaker than average and it could be even record um week um which could give us some early wintriness. So we'll have to keep an eye on what happens with this, and I'll keep updating this every few weeks. Um, and we'll have to see what comes out with the polar vortex. And we have to keep an eye, of course, as we head through November, November, December, if we could potentially see a sun stratospheric warming, an early season sun stratospheric warming, could give us some wintriness around December, and even around the Christmas period. Now, this is not the only thing that can give us wintry weather. However, it is one of the main uh, climate drivers in the winter. If we also do have a look at the AO and the NAO. So, these are two indexes that uh, forecast surface weather. Now, I had a look at this uh, a few good few weeks ago now, and I was talking about how the phases we have within the AO and the NAO, how we are exiting a positive phase and going to a negative phase. Now, if you haven't uh, heard this explanation before, I'll do it very briefly, that basically a negative AO and negative NAO means we've got above average pressure over the Atlantic, so the AO and the North Atlantic, because generally we should have lower pressure there. We have above average high, uh, above average pressure. It doesn't necessarily mean there is high pressure block blocking there, but it has a higher chance um, and more likely to be a bit amplified the jet stream. And especially a negative AO means more blocking over the North Pole and it spills out colder air. And we can see we are generally in sort of a negative phase. A lot of the time we have been negative over the last sort of six weeks and it does look like we're going to be staying negative into the middle of October. And again, it's an encouraging sign that we stay in this negative phase. Again, it's good for the application of the jet stream um, and potentially seeing some colder weather. If we also have a look at the NAO, you can see pretty blocked as well at the moment. And that's why we're seeing a lot of application. We're going to be continuing seeing that. And if you stay tuned for my sort of short range forecast um, after this, um, you can see uh, that we're going to be having a lot of high pressure around. And that's pretty symbolic of this uh, negative NAO. So if we do now have a look at the ENSO region, which is a bit of a complicated system that I'd, it's difficult to explain really in this video, which I don't want to be dragging on too much. But basically, the ENSO region is an area of water in the middle of the Pacific, stretching along from the Americas all the way along to sort of Asia, down the middle of the Pacific Ocean, and 
it is the sea surface temperatures which we're keeping an eye on. When we do have below average sea surface temperatures, we do have La Nina. When we have above, we have El Nino. And these do affect rainfall patterns across Asia and generally the sort of Pacific region. And, you know, of course, heavy showers, convection, all has knock-on effects within the climate. Big convective systems, big storms, um, does have knock-on effects. And with below average temperatures, which is forecasted for this winter, we have a 70 to 80 percent chance of El Nino this winter. It does mean those rainfall and those storms in the Pacific, and, the sort of, and I mean general low pressure storms, not specifically hurricanes or whatever, are going to be weaker than average, are going to be less than average. And again, these all have knock on effects. If you think about it, less big low pressure systems, not uh, pushing up warmer air further northwards. That cools down um, parts of Alaska, North America, and that means colder than average winter in America. And also has knock-on effects all the way down to Europe. Now, you're just going to have to believe me on this, because it is a very complicated system, as I said. But it does have a sort of positive impact on a colder than average winter. It's not guaranteed, of course, and it is g generally done on statistics, um, as there was a lot to play within it. But the latest forecast is for there to be a 70 to 80 percent chance of a La Nina, which does favour a colder than average winter. And you can see that right here. You can see the cooler sea surface temperatures along the centre of the Pacific. Now, it, it is still warm. It's 25 degrees, but it's a couple of degrees cooler than sort of neutral end. So um, and a good couple of degrees cooler than if it was an El Nino. And that's what we're keeping an eye on. So we do now have a look at the QBO. Now the QBO is um, an oscillation which is measuring wind speeds up in the stratosphere all the way down to the surface um, down in the equatorial area. Now again it's similar to the ENSO where it has big knock-on effects but similar to the stratospheric polar vortex it is winds that travel in a west or easterly direction, and because of the nature of these winds, they do oscillate. And you can see on this chart we have westerly phase and easterly phases, and they all kick off in the stratosphere heading down towards the surface. Now you can see it sort of oscillates every 20 months or so, 20, 25 months, there or thereabouts. You can see the last ECQBO actually failed to come through the atmosphere, which was very, very peculiar. So you can see we did get it in the stratosphere, and it, very, it didn't really make it down to the um, troposphere um, until really we saw Westley QBO starting to make take back control. But you can see the Eastly QBO now is descending once again, and it will be firmly... Um, throughout the atmosphere for the coming winter. And again, easterly winds against the general zone of flow for the UK of west to east, and it gives us an above average chance for the jet stream slowing down, more amplification, more blocking, and more cold weather. And as I said at the start of the video, these are all climate drivers. They're not guaranteeing snow, they're not guaranteeing cold weather, but they are giving us a higher chance, higher probability, of seeing pressure patterns that would favour colder than average conditions. Because remember, we are looking at this across that sort of three-month stretch. Um, and these things at surface level to, to around Europe and the UK can change very quickly. So these are, again, as I said, climate drivers. So we do lastly have a look at the CFS run. Now, as I saw earlier in the video, the CFS did go through the stratosphere, but also this is a new sort of feature on West Central where they've added the CFS, and we can go all the way out to 3,240 hours, very, very far out. This is very experimental. I wouldn't really believe this anywhere beyond about 240 hours, um, similar to what the normal models we have a look at. But it does give us a forecast all the way out to the end of winter. So we'll run through this really briefly. Um, and again, it is just for fun, but it does hopefully show us some potential trends. So we don't do run through. You can see the high pressure we can have at the moment. And right towards the end, where we normally get to the GFS, you can see more high pressure building in. And generally just a bit of an alternating pattern. But we do see 
towards the start of November, some very cold northerly winds. And if we do have a look at A50HPA, you can see potentially very cold northerly winds. I wouldn't rule out snow with this towards the start of November. As I said, it is experimental, nowhere near guaranteed to happen. Just looking at potential hints. Beyond that, we do stay pretty cold throughout the first week of November, especially in the east, holding on to that cold air. And then we get another northerly plunge, even more northerly plunges throughout the middle of November. And again, this is what we saw with the stratosphere forecast, with more blocking around the potential of seeing more amplification early on in the season. And that's what we're seeing potentially on the CFS, so encouraging signs. If we do finally continue through, goes a bit more westerly towards the end of November, a lot of uh, warmer and cooler sectors, potentially even pulling up a bit of a southerly wind there, quite warm, a lot of sort of, uh, uh, a lot of zonal winds, and December not looking particularly cold at all, very, very zonal, we do see a brief northerly blast on Christmas Day, wow, very cold there on Christmas Day, um, it does move through as it is a blast of cold air, we do go generally a bit westerly again, however, you can see we are building up a big Scandinavian high. It, uh, it's starting to build. And we do go a little bit colder with the jet stream shifted southwards. And we generally do have cold air. We'd see a lot of big snow events likely with this. With this warmer sector. With moisture sliding into this very cold frigid air over Europe and the UK. Bringing in snow. But uh, it does again go generally westerly. Again, we still see this repeated pattern of trying to keep this cold air coming in from the east all the way through the end of January. And we continue that all the way to the early February. It goes very westerly once again, losing the signs of anything particularly cold. But right towards the end of February, we see a massive northerly blast. Um, but again, that's pretty typical of the CFS, showing these big ridges of high pressure, which are very unlikely to come off. Right towards the end of the run, we go very cold with easterly winds. Um, and we would be seeing sort of a beast from the east pattern with this. Um, very, very, uh, very, very cool there. And we'd potentially be seeing a massive snow event, of course. Now, again, it is all just for fun. Not guaranteed to happen. Um, but again, just but nice to see some colder patterns coming out. And maybe it is a sign of things to come. Now, I'll, keep, I'll do updates um, on the winter forecast potentially over the next few weeks if we do see any changes happening if we do see anything happening substantially in the stratosphere any more high any more signs of a sun stratospheric warming coming along uh, i'll keep you updated over the coming weeks and the coming months and i'll hopefully have sort of an official forecast of what i do think is going to happen with a bit more backing a bit more data behind it um, as we come into a shorter time frame towards the end of the november and start of december i hopefully will have uh a decent forecast forecast out then but as ever stay tuned as again not guaranteed to see uh it's not guaranteed winter will start in december winter could start mid-january it could start mid-november so always stay tuned and we'll keep an eye on the models anyway i hope you've enjoyed going through these models i will link um the website's in the description, so if you do want to delve deeper into this, as there is a lot of data, especially on the NOAA websites, um, into this sort of thing. So if you do want to do some research, um, and you'll probably know a lot more about me, uh, a lot more about it than me, if you do spend a significant amount of time going through all this, because there is a lot of data, a lot of explanations on there. Uh, so if you are into that sort of stuff, do keep, 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 a, look at, uh, keep a look out for that. Um, but anyway, hope you enjoyed. Uh, make sure you subscribe um, and do remember to follow, watch my, vid my video uh, on the longer term forecast um, later this evening. So anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. And I'll see you again for another video soon.